Hello gorgeous people, welcome to another ranking. I don't know why it never occurred to me to rank the Good Witch film series, but it finally came to me, so here we are. While all my rankings are called worst to best, there is not a single film in the Good Witch film series that I hate, so this is more like a varying degrees of love ranking. This is just focusing on the films, not the TV series, which I also love, so let's get into it. In seventh place is The Good Witch's Family, released in 2011. It's directed by Craig Price and written by G. Ross Parker and Rod Spence, and is the fourth installment in the Good Witch film series. In it, Mayor Tom Tinsdale plans a bridge as his legacy, precursor to Middleton, Delaware's annexation to the city across the river. His wife Martha spearheads the opposition, but instead of her, the committee unanimously calls Cassie to stand for mayor. I started watching the TV series before I started watching the films and I always disliked the character of Abigail and now that I had seen where she was introduced and how, yeah, still don't like her. Doesn't feel like her ways ever change, she still feels like the bad witch. So much for growth. It's funny how an installment called The Good Witch's Family sees so many characters who are Cassie's extended family entirely absent. I understand them wanting to focus on Cassie's blood relative, but I felt they could do both. But like every film in the series, it is still charming, sweet, and pure entertainment. There's never anything to hate, and as long as there's Cassie, there's joy. In sixth place is The Good Witch, released in 2008. It's directed by Craig Price and written by Rod Spence and is the first installment in the Good Witch film series. In it, a darkly beautiful, mysterious woman comes into town and inhabits the local haunted mansion, making everyone wonder if she's a witch or the Grey Lady. This was the film that kicked it all off and it was so magical but in a normal human way and just so pleasant and wholesome and that this film really set the tone and carried it throughout the sequel and the TV series. I love how we see the growth in the characters from the films to the TV series and how perfectly the progression fits the characters, yet there was something I couldn't quite put my finger on that held it just a fraction back from perfection for me. Perhaps the chemistry, the world building, or maybe it was that they started with too much mystery from Cassie. Whatever it was, it didn't stop me from loving this film. In fifth place is The Good Witch's Charm, released in 2012. It's directed by Craig Price and written by G. Ross Parker and Rod Spence, and is the fifth installment in the Good Witch film series. In it, Cassie Nightingale is back to her bewitching ways, but this time she's also juggling a newborn daughter and her job as town mayor. It was by the time I got to this film, I realized I really love the opening credits to these movies. <laughs> They're just as magical and enchanting as the movies themselves, and I absolutely adore them. I love how each film is a perfect continuation. It's like it was already a TV series, just with longer run times, which frankly I'm all for. The film also returns some of the sense of joy and hopefulness and trust that was a bit lost in the previous film, which was The Good Witch's Family. Though none of the films themselves are dark, that one felt darker so it was nice moving back into lighter territory even among many trials and tribulations. In fourth place is The Good Witch's Garden, released in 2009. It's directed by Craig Price and written by Rod Spence and G. Ross Parker and is the second installment in the Good Witch film series. In it, Middleton prepares for its bicentennial and Grey House, which Cassie is remodeling into a and b is to be the party venue. Meanwhile, Cassie's first and only guest claims to be a distant relative. When I first watched this film, I thought, God bless these movies for existing, because with such little effort, they feel so magical and wholesome and in the most beautiful and natural way possible. I know it's so far removed from ghouls and goblins, but it's magical and supernatural light. Given how wonderful they are, I can't not love them. This was when we could first see how perfectly each film would pick up from the last and how the characters would grow so naturally. It was just a glimpse of the beauty to come. The chemistry between the leads was taken to new levels levels in this film. The kids were so sweet, but the best part about it was that it had a beautiful message. They all do, but I think the message just got stronger as we went along, except for the fourth film. In third place is The Good Witch's Gift, released in 2010. It's directed by Craig Price and written by Rod Spence and G. Ross Parker. I bet you get sick of that. And is the third installment in the Good Witch film series. In it, almost as soon as Jake and Cassie decide to get married on Christmas Eve, it complications arise. Ex-con Leon Deeks arrives in town and Jake is asked by the mayor to make him his top priority. Nothing like an installment doubling as a Christmas movie. It was beautiful and touching and yes, I cried because I can't help myself. Think this might go on my Christmas Christmas list regularly. I don't know why I haven't thought to make it a regular fixture, probably because I don't like watching films out of order. 
The series continues the theme of magic, redemption, and mystery, and this is no exception, and it's part of the series' charm. Our characters continue to develop, and we get to follow them through this journey, which adds to the emotion and beauty. I mean, I cry at Christmas movies, and I cry at weddings, and you throw both into the film, so naturally it's going to make me a blubbering mess. Had they ended the series here, it would have ended on a high note, but I'm glad they didn't. In second place is The Good Witch's Wonder, released in 2014. It's directed by Craig Price and written by G. Ross Parker and is the seventh and final installment in the Good Witch film series before it was adapted into a continuing TV series. In it, Cassie looks for a lost, stolen, precious family memento. It's interesting to see how much in the story changed from the movie to the TV series, but it makes sense. With the movies, you can just skip to the next stage in everyone's lives, but TV is slower and you have to show the smaller things, so it makes sense to make bigger changes. And things like loss are natural, and as sad as they are, they give the chance for new beginnings. So I think they made some smart changes. I think this last installment to the films was beautiful as much as all the others and it's been great watching the characters grow but the sadness is that in watching them grow and following them on such a beautiful journey having to say goodbye becomes painful but the pain reminds me of how well done these films are crying means caring and caring means they gave you people to care about and invest in so the writers did good job well done in first place is The Good Witch's Destiny, released in 2013. It's directed by Craig Price and written by Rudd Spence and Annie Young Frisbee, and is the sixth installment in the Good Witch film series. And it Cassie prepares to celebrate her birthday, hoping to bring as many of her friends and family together as possible. While investigating her family history, she discovers a story of a curse connected to the mysterious disappearance of her great aunt. I love whenever these films, or even the TV series, delve into Cassie's ancestry and that very aspect aspect is why I think it's my favorite. It just adds to the enchantment by making the magic and beauty run centuries deep. The rare times the films or episodes in the series talk about Cassie's ancestors and their connection to the town or the people of the town or Grey House itself, that sense of wonder is intensified and it becomes so much more magical. There is so much power and mystery and wisdom that is gained from tapping into history and learning your part of something that exists beyond you. It's as beautiful and joyous as all the other films but this one felt more magical to me and that's my ranking of all seven good witch films have you seen these charming magical hallmark movies have you seen the tv series continuation be sure to let me know in the comments below if you have and what your thoughts are on them and if you have seen these films and think you can share your ranking of them this is the hardest ranking i have ever had to do because i love them so much and so trying to figure out which ones i love the most was not easy but now that it's done i'm out of here so wherever you are stay safe happy healthy keep watching those movies and i hope to see you in my next video so until then